So guys, I did it as promised. I did build my first Raspberry Pi 5 setup, in this case already as a little demo system so I can use this to test some different setups and installations and not having everything on the floor somewhere, having a screen which I have also on my board of my boat so that I can play here with this at home. Um, it is carrying currently my daisy head because I have a MacArthur now on my boat so I can use this here for tests. It has a USB GPS mouse, it has a little speaker connected, it will get also a GPIO based buzzer so that I can test everything. And I used an SSD instead of an SD card for this setup so we can compare how quickly this starts. Let's take a little look on this journey and then in the next uh, and near future we will check how this performs and uh, do our demos with that. Okay, so we will not do the full assembly and construction, but a little overview. So I ordered the WaveShare screen I also have on my boat. You know this one, the 7-inch screen and the Raspberry 5, of course, with 4 gigabytes. 8 gigabytes doesn't make any sense. The NVMe head, a little cooler and a power supply. I chose the WaveShare M2 head, um, supports 2230 and 2242 size M2. This is a little drawback because the little SSDs are more expensive, but I bought a used one at eBay. And you also need an adapter to connect the NVMe to your PC for the image. This part is quite similar to the SD card approach. You can simply write the image on your SSD if it's connected to the PC and then it's prepared. We come later to this, but I will not explain this as this is pretty easy. Not so easy is to find the right standoff size. Um, I couldn't use the ones which were part of the delivery. So I bought extra standoffs 14 mm to attach the NVMe head on top of the Raspberry and another 12 mm to attach the Daisy head on top of the NVMe and it fits perfectly now. Honestly the um, assembly process is a little bit tricky yeah, with the cables and to get this all together but I can now say it all fits if you have the right standoffs and know how this works. You get it all together with the cooler, with the head, with the daisy, with the display. Um, yeah, but you have to learn how this fits together. Yeah, you saw it in the intro. I also did cut a wood piece into shape so then I can mount or fix my screen here into this hole. And I also drilled another hole, but a little one for a tripod mount so that I can yeah, attach this wood piece to a tripod. This is just for demo purpose and for filming. Um, and I can give you already a little hint. The screen has a default orientation. If you turn this upside down, you can change this in for example open plotter so in raspberry and desktop but you also need to invert the touch screen functionality this is okay if you keep it at, as is but if you like i do it here use it for demo purposes um, it doesn't make so much fun to always change this so i decided to find a different way let's say so that my screen is always in the right orientation which is the default one for the screen. Before we take a look uh, on the performance let's take a look how to do the installation to get this working. Yeah you need to prepare your SSD um, with a normal open plotter or any Raspbian or whatever image but you also need to prepare an SD card for your first boot because you can't enable NVMe booting directly. So after the system has booted from the SD card, you connect with Potty or you directly uh, use a keyboard and we need to check the bootloader version. Forget the first command, we just use the second one which comes now and this is um, using the EEPROM RPE or RPE EEPROM command to check the version. And in this case um, we will see that there is an update available and before we do anything on the boot order 
we will apply the latest version and for that we simply use raspi config and there you navigate to advanced options bootloader version and you say that you want to use the latest one and not the default one the latest one you say yes and you need to reboot afterwards after the reboot we check it again um, and we see that we now have the latest version and it's up to date. And now we can change the boot order. We do it again with uh, Raspi config boot order and the advanced options and we take the info me for the first um, boot device. If this doesn't work after reboot, check uh, with the following command, the API eeprom command, but with uh, dash config at the end, um, check the boot order. You get a boot order information and you need to read this from right to left in this case. And you see one on the right, this means it will first check SD card, then six this is our info me device, then for USB and then F start again if it doesn't work. So it will here first try SD card, so still boot from the SD card. If this is not removed, it will boot from the SD card. You can use the command with uh, dash dash edit, the EEPROM config command, and there you can edit the boot order. And if you change six and one, so six at the end, and you save it, um, then it should work and boot from the info me. And of course you can check this as well so that you're sure after reboot um, you enter the command lsplk and then you can see which is the boot firmware device or which device was used for booting and you see this is our informe in this case so we are sure that he did boot from the informe we can also remove the sd card of course now so why did we do this first of all an sd card is not very reliable however my experience is that they are good enough um, but an SSD is much quicker and you know OpenCPN I tried this on a Raspberry 4 and I was not happy it is too slow uh, it works perfectly and flawless on a Windows machine and now I was curious to know how does it work on a Raspberry 5 and I have to say that it's much quicker yeah so it is much quicker and it makes sense, let's say now, to use this as a plotter on board directly with the Raspberry 5. And as said, um, I don't think that the 8 gigabyte version has any advantages. Uh, all tests show that the 4 gigabyte version is uh, in 99% more than enough. Another very little maybe advantage is that you can use the serial or UART0 and you can still use Bluetooth. So I was able now, you saw this also uh, shortly, to connect for example a keyboard or a mouse via Bluetooth and still use in this case my DAISY head on top via UART0. So you have Bluetooth and UART0 at the same time. And for example, also YouTube runs much smoother on a Raspberry 5. Or in other words, if you want to use it for videos on your screen or something, um, yeah, the Raspberry 5 is the right choice. So my setup is done, it is prepared uh, for me. The next step is, for example, to compare a VNAV with OpenCPN. Um, for both use cases to use it on the Raspberry itself as well to use it um, on a mobile device and this is just our plotter here so we will check this out and compare the performance um, but this is nothing for today this was just to give you a little insight how the Raspberry 5 works with open plotter but also um, if it makes sense to use a Raspberry 5 on uh, our sailboats. And I think so, yes. So I hope you enjoyed it and see you next time. See you next time.